Hey guys, a couple of weeks ago we started working on two tillers. We got this one with the Ducar engine, it's a Ford tiller, basically ready to go, but uh, had a couple of little outstanding things we wanted to do on it. We got this one to fire, but the carburetor needed some serious work, so I've ordered in a few parts. Let's get these things put together. Starting off, we've got the throttle cable that we need to attach, and uh, I wanted to get one of these aluminum dipsticks, because it's got the magnet in the end of it. I'm not sure if this screw is going to fit into the uh, the bracket that's on the uh, the tiller already, and I dug through my father's junk and found a, uh, a nice little, looks like about a 3 6 neat screw with a uh, matching nut. Let's get those items installed and uh, we'll be able to call the Ford tiller ready to go. First, and by far the easiest job to do, we'll take this oil dipstick out of here. And we'll put the aluminum one in. Yeah, we're pretty well full on oil. It's nice and clean. This uh, has been run through the garden. Got everything ready to go for this planting season, but always a good idea to have this thing in a good shape for next year. And recall over here we've got the throttle cable that runs up to the handlebar that is not connected up to the uh, replacement Ducar engine that's on here. Not sure if this was a Honda or what it was originally. But it may have been a flathead Briggs. What we've got here is the throttle arm and we'll hook into this hole here and here's our hold down clamp and that doesn't appear to be threaded so I think we're gonna have to use the uh, the bolt and the nut that we've got and that should be able to hold the throttle cable in place. We're going to hold the nut with a pair of ice grips underneath the throttle plate. Before I get too carried away tightening it down. That appears to be full throttle. It's a little on the stiff side, and we can fix that by backing this nut off here. And it looks to be about a 10 mil. Let me go grab a 10 mil wrench. Still just a little snug. That appears to be working good. There we go. That appears to be a throttle cable all hooked up. Well, those are the two jobs that I wanted to do to the old Ford tiller. Now let's get on to this Craftsman. This is the carburetor we have for the Craftsman tiller. Uh, we got new fuel line. We got a shutoff valve so that we can turn the fuel off and uh, run the carburetor bowl dry. That will help with uh, reliability. We've got uh, a new gasket for the float bowl because that's what was cracked. We've got a new seal for the bolt and uh, combination bolt main jet that holds the float bolt to the bottom of the carburetor. I also see down in the bottom there, well it's showing up for you guys, see that red uh, kind of o-ring down in the middle of the black o-ring? That is a new seat. 
There's also a needle in here as well. And we've got a, a new plunger for the primer. Now this one is not real pliable. The one that's on the carburetor already, I think, is a little more pliable than the new one. So I think we're going to leave that well enough alone as long as everything seems to work. Otherwise, we'll uh, change it out if we have to. So since we got a new O-ring for the seat, I think we'll change that out as well as the needle. May as well give this thing as good a fighting chance as we possibly can. I'm going to need a small screwdriver to dig that uh, old seat o-ring out of there. I don't know how well that's showing up. It appears to go in the hole that way. Maybe a little piece of wire. There we are, it's coming. Pretty sure it's supposed to be in there this way. And we very carefully push it down in there so that it doesn't get torn up. I don't know if you guys can see it or not down in there. The lighting's not the best in the garage here, but I take it out in the sun and I look down there and the seat looks like it is seated in there absolutely perfect. I'm going to use the old uh, needle clip just because it seems to fit on there better than the new one did. Actually, I think we're going to go with the original needle. It's a little bit smaller diameter and it sits in the clip nicer. And now we very carefully lower it down into the opening and put the pin back in. Careful to get all the sawdust off. And there we go. Just a little bit of a tweak with the screwdriver in there. Lifts that tab ever so slightly and now we're parallel. Peel this gasket off of the main jet. Put the new one on. And we've got our new seal. For the float bowl, we'll get it down in place. And I've turned this float bowl around so that the upper or the taller part, when it's sitting like this, lines up with the hinge and that allows the gives the float more room to drop. Needs just a little bit more uh, turn on that with a wrench and we should be good. Okay, all snugged up. Now this carburetor is ready to go back on the machine. We've got our fuel supply comes in here and I guess this is a return back to the tank. Or a vent. Not sure we have to take the tank right off. I think we can get this off of here and uh, hopefully get it the other side to refeed that fuel line down through there and add in our fuel shutoff that we want. Well, there's the fuel line out. I don't know how well this is going to go putting it back in though. Spring clamp off of there. We've got our nice little quarter inch fuel valve. And a short little nub of fuel line. And it is certainly stiff to get on there. And I think we're going to use ear clamps. I like ear clamps better than hose clamps because they hold a little tighter. They are single use, but they do a better job of holding everything in place. Now we've got to convince that to go up over the nub coming out of the bottom of the fuel tank. Something like that there. Now for the tricky part, we've got a nice coil of fuel line. Now we need to shove it down through what needs to be a relatively straight path. I think I'm gonna see if I can get a piece of wire shoved through there, and then we'll just kind of follow the uh, the hose down the piece of wire. Hopefully this will work. I see it out the other side. 
Well, let's just hope that the uh, wire will carry this hose through without too much difficulty. There we go. That was a little interesting fishing that through there, but we got it. I left a whole bunch of slack on the, uh, the carburetor side here. Over here, we've got lots sticking out. We'll snip this off and get it mounted to the, uh, the shut off valve. I will say this stuff is tough. Either that or these side cutters are really bad. One of the two. We're going to put the clamp on before we put the uh, hose on the barb. We'll slide it back a little bit so that we've got some slack to play with. Here we are. We've got a good solid connection to the uh, bottom of the tank there now. I think that's on. I think that's off. This needs a little bit of a cleanup and we'll get it remounted. Then it's time for the carburetor. I'll bring you guys back when I get set up on the other side to uh, start remounting the carburetor. It's time to put the carburetor back in place. We've got our fuel line that we ran through. This will need to get nipped off a little bit uh, shorter. I've got too much slack on there, probably in around that length. And we've got our crankcase vent that comes down here. Now, the, uh, the vent tube is a little bit cracked and chewed up. I think what I'm going to do is take that zip tie off of there and uh, trim it back just a little bit. It is just the crankcase vent. It comes off the valve cover, which is just up here, and loops down and comes out there. I'm not too terribly concerned if the hose is less than ideal. It's not like it's got to carry liquid. It's just carrying some vapor. Tie wrap off, and uh, yeah, this little trim. There's a rear clamp for that one. That's where the carburetor has to go, so eh, we'll take a couple inches off. And there's the ear clamp for our fuel supply. I don't want to forget the gasket. On there. Now we get the ear clamp down. That one's good tight. Bolt started. The same on the back side. There's our crankcase vent, nice and snug too. Turn the fuel on. I don't know if we've got anything flowing or not. We should have. Remember the comment that I put on the screen showing that I put this in upside down? Well, this is the end result. And quite honestly, I spent about an hour troubleshooting this, trying to figure out what the problem was before I realized that I'd made the bonehead mistake putting the seat in upside down. I'm going to save you guys all of that time watching me troubleshoot this problem. And uh, we'll skip right to the, uh, the final end where uh, we managed to get this thing to at least fire off. And the needle's not seeing. But see, we got the fuel shut off working. That's a step in the right direction. Well, I had a 50-50 chance of getting that seat in there right side up or upside down. And I think I, uh, I got it in there upside down. Well, let's drop this float bowl off again. Take the carburetor back off. I don't think we have to take it all the way off. We'll just drop it down. We'll see if we can get in underneath there. Pop that O-ring out of there and put it in the other way and see if we can get this to seal up. Okay, we got it out of there. Now let's push it back in the other direction. Hopefully we didn't carve it up and wreck it. Well guys, the fuel is on and I don't see any dripping. That's a good sign. I think we've been successful getting this carburetor to start behaving itself. Let's see if this thing will fire up and just kind of run a little bit. Bring it up off idle so it'll spark. And I'll give it a little tug.
we've got our carburetor issue sorted out. Seems to be running and uh, we still got the governor that we've got to sort out. It's going to need an oil change, a few other odds and ends, but I think that's going to be in the next video. Thanks a lot for stopping by, checking out this little project. This one got a little frustrating towards the end. We're not done yet. Check back for uh, part three, I guess, on this one. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next mass.